Good evening. Welcome to the May 8th Commission on Disabilities meeting. Please stand for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Take a roll call of the members. Rick Frenny. Robert Bent. Present. Enza Goodwin. Present. Sorry for going out of order there, my mistake. <laughs> Michelle DeBellis. Present. Paul Mazzoni, absent. And uh, David Hesse, absent. Okay, the first item that we have on the agenda, um, item one, um, is something that I just wanted to uh, inform the commission. I know I sent the agenda out um, in case there's any questions. Uh, Dimple Rana from the Revere Healthy uh, uh, community Initiative Department uh, was contacted by uh, uh, an agency called Community Work Services. Um, what this company is, it's a nonprofit organization uh, assisting individuals with barriers to employment through training and employment services. Um, their pro their uh, program uh, offers a career exploration program for young adults ages 16 to 22 with uh, learning disabilities. Uh, with the goal of the program is to help these young people develop their soft skills and then uh, help them find volunteer internship uh, opportunities in career areas of uh, their interest. Uh, presently, they had a student who was, in from, who was a Revere High School senior. Um, so Dimple thought uh, that our two departments uh, would be a great place for him. And we uh, interviewed the candidate and found that we would be able to uh, help out and allow him to get some experience and receive the, the training and hours uh, that he needs. Um, he actually started um, at, with an intake uh, last Thursday with Dimple um, in, in her office. He's uh, presently going to be working Monday, Tuesday, um, and I believe Thursdays um, from 3 to 5. Uh, I'm not sure on the Wednesdays since we um, have, don't have uh, City Hall hours after 12.15 on Fridays. Uh, he's in school, so it doesn't work out. Um, so basically what both of uh, our departments are, are doing right now with him um, is we are, uh, what I'm doing is all our um, disability ac accessible surveys um, that we presently have been getting in, he is going to be electronically scanning them uh, and putting them in electronic copies. And what Dimple is also going to uh, uh, create for us with him is uh, a, 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 an electronic spreadsheet with the tabulation, a statistical tabulation for us uh, through those um, and help him create that so that we can see the different types of disabilities, age brackets and whatnot from those surveys uh, that will help benefit us. Um, and then um, from there, there could be uh, other areas that we, we would be able to uh, to use uh, his knowledge. He has a vast knowledge with uh, computers. Um, so his first name um, is, uh, is Leo. Uh, he's a high school senior. Um, so he's, 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 very, he's very smart and intelligent and very outgoing. Um, so I, I think this is, this is gonna help out and uh, help out us and, and him in the same, in the same aspect. Um, so I, today was, Actually, yesterday, I believe, was his first day in the office. So um, I will be giving uh, Dimple a call tomorrow to see how things are going. Um, it just hasn't been, the hours haven't been coinciding for me to physically get in there. But if there's any questions or concerns, uh, she knows how to get a hold of me with him. Um, and then I'm going to try and, and get in here one of the days that he's here. So I figured that will help us out. And then any other areas that we seem fit, because he has, I believe he has 100 hours that he has to accumulate. Um, so we're gonna do our, our best to try and accommodate now, from now to the time of his graduation. Um, and then there may be, uh, they may be looking for some summer hours for him too. So Dimple's gonna be working on that with, uh, with her department. So I'm not sure if anybody has any, any questions on that or uh, that's, um, that's where we are on that. It came, it came since the last meeting. It was after the last meeting, a few days after that. So we had to move relatively quickly. So um, she contacted me or else I would have came to the commission 
before it, but I, I figured it would be uh, it would be good for us uh, since we do want to get these surveys, electronic copies of it, and try and keep everything electronic instead of paper copies. Um, so if anybody has any questions about that. Oh, I should have got my own mic. Uh, now, you say these are for young adults age, uh, age 16 or 22, and he's a high school senior, so I'm assuming he's around 17, 18 years old. This 100 hours, uh, he has to have this before, before June, before he graduates in June, or before he graduates, before he's in a post-grad program at the high school till 22. So I'm just trying to, are we only allowing them 100 hours, or? For, from my understanding, through through that program from um, Community Work Services, it's a, it's 100 hours that he has to have before the uh, end of the school year. I believe he is going to be graduating this year. Any other questions? Next on the agenda is item two. Um, last Tuesday, we had the uh, uh, Massachusetts Office of Disabilities uh, Regional Commission on Disabilities meeting was hosted here in Rivera at City Hall, which was last Tuesday, May 2nd, um, for, for the regional area Commission on Disabilities for different cities and towns in the area. Um, and the, from my recollection, they, we had uh, 15 different communities were represented. Um, and the feedback I got from the from the state that that was a good showing um, from them, and they they were very pleased on that. They were here, they did everything. They they ran the meeting. We just uh, hosted the facility for them, and, and they they ran the meeting. Um, I'm I know Enza took some detailed notes. She's very good at that. Um, I was doing a little bit of the running around trying to make sure everything was in order. So I'm going to turn that over to Enza to give, give a brief summary of that meeting. Um, so Enza, if you would. Um, so Ralph, I want to thank you for organizing the event and having Revere being able to host it. It was a great um, chance to meet some other people from in and around the state. Um, we got to hear a lot about the ADA improvement grant process, and I think that was beneficial for me, particularly because it allowed me to understand how the process works and that if we don't get approved necessarily the first time around, that we can apply again. Um, and I also enjoyed hearing about the different training opportunities that are available, and I'm hoping that we can participate in some of them. I think it would be a worthy cause for the city. Um, I guess my greatest takeaway was to hear what other communities are doing as commissions. And um, a couple communities in particular, I can't, um, I can't remember the exact one, but they mentioned about how they celebrate a lot of the accomplishments that they have, Acton. And they also uh, mentioned how different members take on different roles. And I think that's maybe the direction that we should go in as a um, commission, focus on different areas. The only concern I had was there wasn't much mentioned in terms of things that are done for young children. So I think that would maybe be a great focus that we could turn our attention to if we split up into different groups. And I, and I think that's, that's a, a lot of the, I don't want to say the problem, but I think that's an area of great concern with a lot of Commission on Disabilities. There seems to be a lapse for the young adults with disabilities. And if we remember, that was one of our first goals uh, that we stated. There, there seems to be a little bit of a lapse for the young adults, young children and young adults that have disabilities in the community. And we need to find a way to bridge that gap and be able to outreach and find programs, not only for those children, but for the, for the, for the families and the parents and offer support and uh, offer um, areas of, of need for them. And, but we need to know, first of all, who they are, where they are, and what they do need. Um, that was one of the biggest things when we created the accessibility survey um, that was still, there's still, filtering in slowly, but that, that, that is a big, uh, big area that will help us see what, what the need is and what we have out there. So uh, I, I, I echo, uh, I echo your, your sentiment and your concerns on that. Uh, 
Um, and I wanted to thank you, Enza, for, for attending that meeting, Ian, Robert, and uh, I know um, Michelle would have liked to come, but if work schedule didn't allow it, and uh, co-chair uh, Rick Frenny also would have liked to attend. Um, but I had, they had sent me some literature, uh, different aspects from the meeting, and I forwarded that to everyone. So hopefully that was uh, uh, beneficial to, to everyone. I don't know if Robert, if you have any uh, comments on the meeting, or on your take on it. Yeah, actually, thanks, Rob. I, again, like Denza just said, thank you for organizing that. And again, like Enza said earlier, the programs that they're offering, the training they're offering, I think is going to be really beneficial to our, our committee and the city as a whole. Um, and I'd like to see kind of the same thing. And it was just saying more stuff for the kids, more stuff for the parents, so they, so they all feel like they're a part of this. Thank you. And uh, I just wanted to um, say that uh, all I did was was ask to host it. Um, I got approval from Mayor Rigo's office to to be able to uh, facilitate it here, um, which is great. And I'm, I'm I'm glad because now people know that uh, statewide that the Revere does have an active commission on disabilities, um, and we're here and we are willing to to uh, help out and. Like we we all we stated to them that we're we're going to be outreaching to a lot of these communities for for questions, concerns, and help and assistance. Um, the the people that were here from the state was the director of the Mass Office on Disabilities uh, was David D'Arcangelo, um, which uh, I owe a great deal of gratitude and thanks for 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 allowing us to host it and coming here along with uh, with uh, Jeff Dugan, who is the assistant director. Um, the other thing that I asked them from, from that meeting, they said that they offer uh, CAD specific training for architectural design. Um, they do offer it and they, uh, from, from my understanding, but if, I, if I'm incorrect, if Enzo or Robert, no, I believe they will come to the community and host it. So what I had asked Jeff, if, um, if there is an opening that, you know, we'd be willing to host it and if, in the, cause they say the space is limited, but if there's any, um, communities around here that are willing to, to uh, go for that training and depending upon the space they have, we'd be willing to host that here because that would be beneficial beneficial to us and uh, probably some of our, possibly our engineering and, uh, and um, planning departments along with the building department. So uh, they, they, will, they are going to get back to us. So any training that we can get along with that, that other program that they were talking about, what was it the bad, what was the, the name, it the exact name of it? Emergency preparedness program, and, emergency. and we would walk away with a, a big bag of supplies and right. materials. And it's for all the disability, all the disability yeah. members in our community. What it would be, it would be a full, um, a full seminar for all the dis disabled uh, members in our community. They would come to Revere uh, and host that. So that's something that we could we we'll look into. And like you said. That's one of the things that it's not on the agenda tonight, but I'll have it as a late item for discussions for some some subcommittees and see if we can designate different people to take on uh, to take on different roles. Uh, anything else you have on that? The uh, the one other um, thing that they did, um, I believe, mentioned at that at that meeting. Um, they briefly touched on the new licenses with the registry of motor vehicles to uh, be able to get the new license um, for, for mass driver's licenses that are going out there. Um, and they, they advised that everyone should get that new license. Um, and they, they briefly were discussing the uh, accessible parking laws um, and about the um, the abuse that's going on with the placards, that you know the state is looking at that. There is a lot of uh, handicap placard abuse that is going on, so the legislature is looking at that along with the uh, MOD giving some uh, technical advice on it. They do not rule on or make decisions on anything like that, but if they're asked, they will. Uh, make some uh, technical re uh, recommendations on that. So, uh, uh, like I said, thank you for, for attending that meeting, uh, my commission members, I, I really appreciated it.
The uh, next item on the agenda was uh, the monthly uh, CODER uh, calls, which is the Commission on Disabilities Alliance, the monthly conference call meetings. Um, the last one happened on May 2nd. The items on the agenda uh, was the continued discussion from last month's call re uh, regarding the ADA Education and Reform Act, which is Home Rule Petition Number 620, um, and which is uh, which we, we touched on upon last month, so it's just a continuation on that. That's still active, uh, and the legislatures are uh, looking for responses uh, from the community, so if anybody has um, any comments on that to please uh, forward them to your uh, to your legislatures. Also, the other thing that was on our call was the alternate alternative housing voucher program, uh, which is uh, Massachusetts State Budget Line Item 70049030, uh, and they asked that everyone can support the increasing its funding to $7.7 .7 million in the fiscal year uh, 2019. And the uh, last item that we continued discussion on uh, this month from last month was the uh, strong support for Senate Bill 1379 and House Bill 2498, which is an act relative to Architectural Access Board, um, which is S1379 and H2498. Uh, it would align our state access regulations of the Architectural Access Board with the Federal Architectural Access Board regulations of the uh, American with Disabilities Act. Uh, so it would be aligning the AAB with the ADA. It's imperative to ensure that access to employment, housing, and equal civil and human rights for all people with disabilities across the Commonwealth. One thing that we also learned in that meeting is they added, they say they invited, added the employment um, from the meeting that we had Tuesday that for some reason, I believe he said, was it in, in 2010? It was taken out by some chance, that word. Uh, the working workforce or working environment, something was taken out of it and they're making sure that it's getting put back in. Um, if, I, if I recall, I have to look through those notes, but I, I think that's what it was. So they wanna make sure that it's back into the language. Um, so that's that's just the update from that, that monthly call. So it's, it's just working on that. Um, item four, um, I'll turn over to Enza is uh, our reminders. Um, so we can say that our Autism Awareness Month that we celebrated in the month of April was a huge success. Um, children and families enjoyed many events in and around the community, and most of the events were free of charge. I'd like to thank Revere Public Schools, um, particularly Dr. Vidala, Revere Recreation, Roro to Revere, and Till um, for their support. They provided many events, many spaces for us to offer events to our children and our families, and it gave us a nice chance to um, meet people that we didn't know before who are now becoming more active in our programs. We also held our first annual Walk for Autism at the stadium on April 21st. We had over 300 walkers, and um, we are looking forward to doing it again. We're already planning it for next year. And we encourage people to check out our Facebook page um, for more information. I am happy to say that between um, t-shirt sales, non-uniform days at the schools around the community, and our walk, we raised $14,000 in one month. That, month it, uh, that money is going to the CPAC account and we are in the process of setting up summer programming for our children. So $14,000 in one month with um, just five people coming together and working hard. Um, there is going to be um, some more information shared at the school committee meeting. I believe it's been changed to May 29th, so maybe check that out and get some more information about it. And then the final thing that we have going on is on May 23rd at six o'clock at the Revere League for Special Needs, um, we will have our basic rights meeting. So um, please contact Peter Del Greco for more information on that. Thank you. Does anybody have anything else they wanna to add to the monthly reminders? I'd just like to add, I thought the uh, Enzer and Peter and everyone down at the uh, Autism Walk down the stadium did an incredible job. It was a, it was a little, little chilly in the morning, but everyone uh, everyone came out and the sun hit. And uh, and thank you again for having my daughter sing the national anthem. And 
I got a nice picture with Blades, the hockey mascot from the Bruins, so that was pretty cool. But the turnout was great, and I told Peter, and I'll tell you, we had our event that same night. So next year, I want to make sure our times, our uh, days, they're on different days, so I can throw my full support and have all my people come down and walk, and you can raise a whole lot more money for CPAC next year. So that'll be our goal to help you guys out. So thank you and a great job. Yeah, and, and we appreciate that. And I think our focus is to get all these individual groups that are in the community mm -hmm. to come together. I think there are, it's great that there are different pockets, but it seems like a lot of us are trying to do the same thing, yep. and we're doing it as individuals. So it would make the most sense if we came together. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is item five under old business. Um, this would be for 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 Rick and, and Robert. Uh, is uh, I know they're working on an update about the discussion on the disabled children and young adults pilot program. So if you wanted to briefly just say that you you know you guys are present. Yeah, um, yeah. Bob and I uh, talked about it uh, a little bit actually before the meeting tonight as well and. Um, we're still looking at some free spaces, but uh, we may have one in mind. I don't want to announce it just yet, but I'm hoping to verify and confirm it this week. And it's just a matter of uh, getting the schedule and what days uh, work for us and getting the volunteers together. So we have the money. Ralph's going to supply us the vendor list for the supplies, and that's the easy part. Uh, looks like we may have a, a, a space and so it's a matter of just getting the word out and how we're going to recruit people, young artists across the city and young to be artists from two years old on up and how many days a week or one day a week and we'll do it all summer long, something for them to look forward to. What do you think about that, Bob? I actually think it's a great idea, Rick, and thank you again for your ideas and um, your support with this. And to go out to the city, if anybody has any ideas, please email one of us and let us know what your ideas are, and if you want to support it and maybe volunteer, just let us know. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Rob. Okay, next item is item six. It's going to be late items, and this is what I briefly discussed, and this is going to be open to suggestions and uh, discussion between our, our members here. Uh, the late items in um, uh, and Zara Levy uh, uh, touched upon it for some different committees that we should make some ideas of different committees and uh, and who should head on them. Oh, I did have one more update, uh, which was uh, up. Sorry about that. Update on Metro Boston Homeland Security. There was supposed to be a meeting on on this past Monday, but we had to. Uh, the state had to reschedule it, so there is no update on that. So I'm just going to carry that over. Thank you, Rick, for for noting that to me. I marked it off on my paper. So uh, I'll open that up for discussion about uh, different committees and what we think the roles should be. So if anybody has any suggestions, uh, please feel free. Um, I know my comfort level would obviously be to work with um, the younger children, the younger age group, maybe, I don't know, ages two to nine or two to 12, and trying to get families more involved, so. I think that's what I've been working on over the past year, and I'd like to continue focusing on that. I'd like to uh, add on to that, and since you know my passion, obviously our passion is our children, and uh, I would like to uh, continue with that and see if we can do something and get groups together for the uh, you know we're doing we're doing whatever we can through the foundation with field trips and stuff but there's a whole lot more we can do as a community and with this commission especially with the uh the high school seniors and uh, the post-grad kids that are there till they're 22 uh there's nothing in the town for them so uh we got to start brainstorming getting some grants and putting some after uh, after school projects together for them because i know they are just itching to to do something and that's what we're here for we're here to make it a better better world for everyone, whether you're two or 102. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Michelle? And I just want to say, too, as everyone knows, with my son and my background, that's my passion, too. And I think that um, there has to be more for all the kids. I agree. It, all of them, whether it's two or until they're 22. So maybe we could split it up with our comfort zones. Maybe Enzer and I will 
uh, kids are still young, and then maybe if some of us could work with Rick for the older children, and we could kind of brainstorm all together and come up with some different ideas. Um, the community does need some more, and families do have to get connected more, because there's a lot out there, and a lot of families that I think don't know where to go all the time, or who to connect with as parents. Kind of a network thing. I think it would be a great idea. Okay, my, uh, I, I, I agree. Um, my, my idea is, should we branch out into maybe four, little, four different committees, get some names for four different committees, like we can have, um, an, uh, um, I'm trying to think of some, some names, like a, a young adults outreach committee that can do any type of social networking, planning activities. I'm just throwing out some names, then we can have one for, um, for young adults outreach committee, then we can have one for seniors outreach committee. Yeah, I'm just looking for names that we could we could just make yeah. different committees, and then in, in those committees, then we can branch out different networks. So if anybody has any ideas of, um, I'm thinking maybe three or four committees, and I just need four committee names, and then we'll even though we'll have you as a chair of that committee, and then you can also work almost as how the how the council has different committees, and then members, one person will be the head of it, and then other people can work on it. Is that? Does that sound That's great? A good idea, yep. And then if anybody has any ideas of committee names. Yeah, I just want to say um, with that in mind, sorry, I keep kicking <laughs> two big guys here in the microphone. <laughs> uh, I just want to say that um, a few years ago, uh, while my son was still in high school, he's 23 now, uh, we went to the uh, Revail League for Special Needs, went there with a uh, uh, the teacher, Mr. Nazaro, was in charge of the life skills program at the time, and a couple of moms, and asked if we could uh, rent the place for after school, uh, maybe once or twice a week for an hour and a half. That was it. Go there, 3 o'clock to 4.30. Uh, Matt was going to show up as well as a few teachers on their own time. We had no money for that. We were just going to pay for supplies. and. They asked, uh, first they said they have to be members. It was $30, $35. We said, no problem. Then they said no because the students, the, uh, the, the people that are there now are much older um, than, what's, than what we wanted to bring in. And because they work during the day, um, the people that run the Revail League for Special Needs say it's not fair to their children who, who are much older, who are our age, uh, that they can't go after school and hang out in the Revere, you know, in the building with them. Why should these kids have all the fun? These, this is, I'm, I'm almost verbatim speaking what they were telling us. And I'm like, we have this beautiful Revere League for Special Needs building. And if you go by there, it's vacant all the time. They do have their parties. Uh, they do have their things once a month. We, we tried going back a second time. And we were told, uh, absolutely not. They're going to make our told we're going to be supervised. The kids were just going to go there and just talk and play cards and play checkers. They weren't going to run around. These weren't four- and five-year-old kids high on, on sugar cookies. These were kids just looking for a, a place to go and say, oh, this is our building. We can come here for an hour a week. That's all we were looking for. We couldn't get in. So I just want to say that for as far as uh, outreach projects and after-school projects, uh, this is not something new for me. We've tried this. And we tried this twice, and we got shot down twice. And I asked uh, for help uh, from some uh, city officials, but nothing could be done. So uh, that's where we stand. I'm not sure if anyone else had the same experience, or if you, one of you ladies or Bob would like to uh, chime in on this one. Thank you. Yeah, um, if you wouldn't mind. So I mean, of course, I feel that it's important that everyone get to express themselves and I just want to note that we have invited the president of the league to attend our meeting here and she has chosen not to respond and come so I just want to make that clear to anyone watching this meeting that what we're saying and sharing is an, um, an attack. We've almost encouraged various meetings to have this open dialogue and no one has taken us up on this offer. We've also had uh, communication with the mayor's office regarding the situation. We have gone in 
and try to have meetings with the league to run our programs. And we, Rick, we've done the same thing. We've offered to pay as members. We've offered to make donations. We've offered to help um, with any repairs that might be needed. And we've gotten the runaround for the better part of two or three years. Jen Duggan and I, as well as Michelle, try to do everything we can in this community for our children and for other children. We also work full time. We also care for other children at home, same like everyone else. We've gotten nowhere with this league. This league, you're correct, besides a preschool that's run out of there on a daily basis, is not being used to its full capacity. We don't have a location. For example, right now, you guys are trying to plan an art program, scrambling to find a place to run this. We run a, a weekly play group that luckily the rec has been nice enough to host us. We shouldn't be scrambling for a location when in fact there is a location here in the city. When in fact we have people that are willing to volunteer their time, their energy, and to get this community to come together and to move forward. It's a shame and it's a disgrace, and we welcome the president of the league to come up to one of our meetings or to maybe have a meeting in the mayor's office because there's no reason that we should be excluded. Our children right now are being excluded. If you see, and, uh, and I'm, it's wonderful they're taking care of these, these children from, from youth to, to, to adulthood to, you know, to the, you know, now they're, they're in their 40s and 50s. You can see the photos from the carnival when they have the Revere League of Special Needs Day. But you don't see any teenagers or anyone in their 20s or their teens in the 10. So um, I know they had um, the executive board there, all the, the, the moms, and they have their kids there up there, and they work during the day, and they get together once or twice a month for a dance. That's it. So it comes down to, and I'm sure we'll do most of this uh, out of session, but it comes down to, and I ran this by when uh, uh, Mayor Rizzo uh, was uh, uh, a few years ago that we started this. So this has been going on for, I'm going to say about maybe seven years. Uh, and um, we've got no luck with it. No one knew it's, you know, it's it, the ownership, how the, how the property, you know, What's their rules? What's their bylaws? This and that. So um, you know, if they, if it's privately owned, and they don't want to allow us in. That's one thing. But if it's owned and there's bylaws they have to stick by, and they're not honoring that, this is a whole different uh, legal matter for them to open the doors up for us. We're not trying to take the building. We just want to use it for an hour and a half a week. It's there. We're going to be there with lots of adults and responsible people. We're not going to run around and paint the walls. So. Uh, I hear you, Enza. Uh, it's uh, it, it is frustrating. It is frustrating, I, and we can go on and on talking about yeah. the two meetings I had. They were just they were awful. It was like something out of a comedy. Right. What happened? It was incredible. And and if I may, uh, so a couple things, and I understand what you're saying. Maybe we don't know the behind the scenes facts of right. what's going on, but when you have people within the community like us who have offered to pay our dues and then are being told, no, you're not welcome, well, then that's problematic. That's discriminatory behavior. Um, the second piece to it is our monthly CPAC meetings are held there. I can't tell you how many times that the parents who come to these meetings, again, new parents to the community or new parents to the process, are asking us why more things aren't taking place out of there, and we can't give them a, a truthful answer. Sorry, the only answer is that they don't allow us. They did, I don't wanna, the Reveal League Special Needs said, yes, they can be members. We have one dance a month. So I'm gonna pay an annual membership for, at the time, for my 12, 11 year old daughter to go to a dance with, with, their, with, uh, with 50 year old people, that's, you know, it doesn't mess, nothing, you know, nothing, it, it's, she should be with people 12 to early teens and, and kids like Ricky Spirit, someone from 18 to 24, and that's how it should be booked. You don't want your kids going to a dance with my son, and my son would never be at a dance with an elementary school kid. That's just how life works. Um, but they did offer us to, oh yeah, we'll take your membership money. We have a dance once a month. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's, that was it, so. Hopefully uh, we stirred the pot a little bit tonight and uh, maybe the mayor and uh, someone from his office and the Rear League Special Needs can respond and uh, 
Um, they could tell us why all they want, but uh, unless that building's privately owned and they can do whatever they want with it, uh, there's no reason why they can't open the doors to the city of Rivera for children with special needs, which it says on the building. Thank you. Hopefully this will, uh, will open up some doors and uh, know that we are, we're here uh, and it's a need, it's a definite need. Um, thank you, thank you for uh, voicing your opinions and concerns. Um, while, while we were having that discussion, I, I was thinking of um, three or four subcommittees and I wanted to, to run that by you for three or four different names and get some feedback. Um, I wanted to break it down into, into maybe four general areas. One of them I, I was thinking was uh, calling it po possibly the Disabled Children Affairs Subcommittee. Um, our young, uh, or how will we do? This is just, we can do a play on words and figure it out. Uh, a second one would be the Disabled uh, Young Adult Affairs Subcommittee. And a third would be uh, Disabled Elder Affairs Subcommittee. And then a fourth one would be uh, a Disabled City Liaison Affairs Subcommittee. Um, and then uh, we would have different things that would fall under that. Um, I just wanted to put that out there to see uh, any thoughts or any ideas on that to see if that works. And in and, and, and each one of those groups, we would have, that group would be trying to figure out ways to outreach to those certain groups and uh, bring uh, areas of needs, whereas the Disabled City Liaison Affairs could, could handle everything that comes out of those subcommittee groups and bring it to the city um, as a whole, to, to the mayor's office or the council or, or where needed be. Um, so I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, I, I know where the commissions on disability, um, I don't know, like, Maybe it's me, I'm old school. I just changed, I hate using the word disabled in front of right. children on these titles. Right. Um, so uh, I know you have disabled children affairs, and these are just throwing them out there. Right. The subcommittee, um, you know, we, uh, when we did our, our ball games and soccer games with the rec, we, instead of putting disabled, we called it children of all abilities, all abilities. baseball games. So, right. um, you know, we can call it, uh, you know, the children of all abilities affair, and we all know what we're referring right. to. Children of All Abilities, Young Adult Affairs, uh, and then we have the Elder Affairs. Uh, you know, we call it Special Elder Affairs. Right, because uh, that's designated for yeah. the Elder Affairs. Right, from, right. We can call it, you know, Special Elder Affairs, and then uh, I'm just brainstorming here, ladies and boys. But let me know what you think if uh, if I'm on we're on the same track here. I think this is a good starting point. I mean, I think we can go home and kind of mull it over. Um, I think it'll be more important will be the work that we put into it and the title will come along. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If we figure out how we want to make committees and then once we know what the committees are going to be, then we can put in what those committees are actually going to do. Um, and then when we know what they're going to do, then we'll designate um, the person that's going to be the chair of that committee. And then like I said, everybody can be part of all the committees, but we want to have one person that's going to be in charge of that committee because as of right now we're 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 running all over the place um, this way things will get done one of the things I was thinking is after we get the committees up and running is maybe do something where we go up to the, some of the schools and have like seminars with the kids so they can see like how we live our lives as disabled and stuff like that and see what maybe the schools may need for help is at, for disabilities or the kids may need outside of this outside of the school or even in the school yeah and that would be what one of the committees would do as an outreach program to those to those designated those designated groups once we get the groups figured out then those groups will have an agenda on what to do and how to outreach to those those specific areas uh, on getting to those 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 that that demographic yeah, because I remember like when I was in high school, I used to, we used to have once a week, twice a week, we used to have BCIL from Boston come in and speak to us about independent living, stuff like that. And I've also done speeches where I've done it for city year and stuff like that. So I'm willing to run with that if I, if we, whatever committee we can come up with. 
Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Rick, for that suggestion. Like I said, I was just trying to jot things down and... Um, no, we were talking about the... Um, of the thing, I just... You started saying disabled, I just came right. from that, but, uh, you know... Uh, well, you and I, like Siamese twins tonight here. Yeah. But like uh, Enza said, it's, you know, obviously it's the work we do, regardless of what the name is, but um, that's a great point, again. Thank you. One other thing that I wanted to make note of is if anybody does have time on this committee, you can go down to the HR and you can get a, a city ID made, okay? Um, and just say you're from the Commission on Disabilities in Clay. They can't fit the whole Commission of Disabilities, so the abbreviation would be COD, all capital letters. So you can just go down there when you get a chance and they can make you an ID, especially if we do these subcommittees and it, it does make it look better. Um, to do that. Any appointment? Just walk in there. No, no, you can walk in there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And Elaine Fielding should be able to uh, take care of it. Okay. Does anyone have anything else for a late item, Robert? There was something I was actually thinking about the other night. I know this summer they have the summer concerts. It, maybe we could put like a table together where we could have some flyers of our disability commission, so that people know we're out there and. Since people are going to be coming to the concert anyway, they'll be able to go to the table and get, you know, pamphlets, flyers, whatever. And maybe then we can get more people involved in the city. Yeah, we can, we can, we can, we can definitely do that. It's just a matter of uh, who would be around to do that once we see the, the scheduling of it. And um, we can do, we can have our accessibility study. We can get a lot of the pamphlets from the state. They'll send us whatever. Um, whatever we need, because the state has great flyers, a lot more better than better than what we would be able to provide, as we saw at at our meeting. Um, anything we need, they would be able to provide us. Um, so that's a great suggestion. Anyone else have anything? I just want to add to that. I think if we could offer, I could brainstorm if all of us could maybe come up with a date that works for all of us. I think if we were all together at a table doing something as a group outside of just the meetings that they see, it might be a really great opportunity to get us out there and together and more unified with the city. I think it's a wonderful idea. That's a great idea. That's a great idea, yeah. yeah. yeah that's this exactly way, what I was of, thinking. Yeah, that's why I'm saying once we see yeah. the schedule, um, maybe like the, the, first con the first summer concert that they have, uh, maybe a, maybe be a, a good thing because usually the, when they have the first concert, that seems to be when they have a, a lot of people. And I believe another time, another thing that maybe it's down down the pipeline is when they, I believe they're going to probably have be having that fall festival again. So that's another time um, that we may be able to put a, a, a table together. And then the sandcastles, of course, we gotta we have to have a. Uh, do you have you ever we ever put one down there before? We no, because this has been yeah. this has been uh, under <laughs> under the rocks for a little while. This yeah. commission, so we're bringing it back to life. So uh, yeah, don't go away this summer, Rob, because we're going to be down down the beach. So we're going to go to yeah, we're going to get a good parking spot. Um, that's a great idea. These are great. Uh, this is the the best meeting that we had. This, we're making a lot of progress tonight, there, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Anyone else have anything? Rob, just another suggestion. Maybe like at the council meetings and stuff, if one of us come to the council meetings, we can hand out pamphlets and stuff. That way the people that come in that may not know that we're there, even though they, we're on TV, maybe we can, if people sit, sit there and go, oh, you know, if the, if the council can announce that we have a disability commission that people may not know about, we can hand out pamphlets and whatever else to, at that time too. The thing that I'm working, I'm working with uh, Nick from the mayor's office that he's going to be starting to publicize it more. The thing that I want to try and get away from is trying to pass out pamphlets and paper, you know, because it's uh, of the w wasting the, the the paper and you know trying to be uh, conservative, uh, you know, conservation conservative on that instead of trying to waste it. But I know the mayor, Nick from the mayor's office, wants to try and 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 publicize the Commission on Disabilities a lot better. Um, it is in the paper every week on our meeting. Even though they, they, they're not here, they do get it from from the, 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 the tapes and they do have a, a, a write-up in the paper. Hopefully they can do a little bit more 
detailed right up on our meetings instead of a little blurb we really would appreciate it um, this way people know what we do um, would be would be a great help for us anyone else all right um, I'm just going to do a reminder um, about our Commission on Disabilities. We have office hours every Friday from 8.15 to 12.15 in the Veterans Services Office, which is located in the Rivera of the Legion Building at 249 R Broadway, which is next door to City Hall. You can either call for an appointment or if you'd like to, if you'd like to, but you do not need one, um, you'll be able to talk to someone from our 311 Constituent Service Center on the other days when you call our office at 781-286-8267, and they'll be able to answer most of your questions, but if they are unable to, they and you would like a call back from our office, they'll connect you right to our voicemail, and I usually try and get right back to you within the hour or two um, and try and answer the questions that you have. Um, also, uh, as a reminder, we still have the... Uh, disability accessibility surveys that we would uh, hope that you would be able to uh, either come by the mayor's office to pick up or at the veteran services office uh, either during their hours which is Monday through Thursday from uh, 8 15 to 5 o'clock or also on Fridays during their hours and my hours which is 8 15 to 12 15 those will greatly benefit uh, not only our department but also uh, the disabled residents and families in the community because that will that will that will greatly help uh, help us know uh, who is out there and what is needed um, so we appreciate uh, all, all the help uh, on that and if you if you do know someone um, who, who uh, is disabled um, if you could um, relay the message to them or come by and, and pick up one of those forms or you could also download it on uh, on our website on our page which is on the uh, on the Rivera uh, homepage, just go under the disabilities tab, and uh, it's right there. You'll have there'll be a link that you can download that. Uh, we would appreciate it. Um, if there's uh, no further business, business, um, our next meeting will be Tuesday, uh, June 12th at 6 p.m. I'd ask for uh, a, a motion for a, to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Anyone second it? I second. Thank you. Have a good night.